Hey, what's up, fellas? How you doing? Man, it's here. Hey, what's going on, everyone? How we doing? Man, Antonelli here. So today, we're talking more baseball cards. As you guys know, maybe you don't, I've started to get back into collecting cards. I did it as a kid. Now I'm starting to grow my collection. Again, it's been basically 20 years since I bought any cards or ripped open any packs. And so today is the third card that I've decided to buy. And I've gone a little different route from what I originally started with. So I originally started with some young players that I think could be Hall of Fame potential players, but they're very, very young. If you haven't seen those videos, go back and check them out. I've gotten Juan Soto so far and Ronald Acuna Jr. You can check those videos and see exactly why I did so. But now we're going to go a little different route. So I'm going to go with a veteran player this time. Okay. Now, I think this player is basically a lock for the Hall of Fame. Um, we're going to talk about his numbers in a second. We're going to get into the numbers. Um, we're going to look at the specific card and why I decided on this specific card. We're going to do all that. But um, let's, let's, uh, let me just show you the card first, and then we'll talk about it more. So today's card is Miguel Cabrera. All right, so this is a 2000 Topps traded Miguel Cabrera. It is a PSA Gentleman 10. So um, not a flashy card, right? But an interesting one. So as you could see, um, card was rather expensive, the most expensive card I bought so far. And like I said, I think that Cabrera is going to be uh, a Hall of Famer, right? And typically, once you get into the Hall of Fame, your card usually continues to grow in value over time. At least that's what I'm hoping is going to happen. Again, I haven't collected cards in a while, um, but I think most people are after players that are all-time greats. And you know, you make it to the Hall of Fame, you're considered an all-time great. So let's um, let's actually let's get into the numbers first because maybe some people aren't so sure if he's going to get into the Hall of Fame. I mean, it's not a lock per se. I think it probably is, but some people might argue against that. And so let's look at his numbers real quick, and then I want to delve into this exact card and why I chose this card. Okay, so first thing here, I think everybody already knows this. Um, you know, Miguel Cabrera's been one of the one of the better players in the league for a long time now. He's 37 years old, so he's up there in age, but he's still, you know, he's still kicking away. And I'm going to show his contract in a minute. He's still got a bunch of years left in his contract. But big dude, 6'4", 250, from Venezuela. And if you look at his numbers, here it is. So he's just under 70 war. And when you're thinking about war, typically Hall of Fame, if you look at war for Hall of Fame, it's usually 50 to 70, somewhere in that range. It does depend on position. The average for first baseman in the um, Hall of Fame is right around 60, I believe. And so he's already above that. And you can see he's closing in on some milestone numbers. So 477 home runs. So, you know, 500 home runs. He, As long as we get back to baseball at some point, um, he should be able to break that. Uh, unless he decides to randomly retire, which I don't think he will until he breaks that. Um, you can also see, wow, 315 batting average. Um, pretty incredible. But you can also see the 2,815 hits. So he's closing in on 3,000 hits, which is also a huge milestone. So um, I think there's no doubt he's getting into the Hall of Fame. Uh, once he gets those numbers, he is an absolute lock. But I would say he's pretty much a lock at this point. Anyway, again, if you look at here... Two-time MVP, 11-time All-Star, seven-time Silver Slugger, two-time Major League Player of the Year. He's a Triple Crown winner. He's won a World Series. He's got four batting titles. And again, look at this amazing, amazing career. He came up when he was 20 years old. Um, so got about half a season in that year. And then you can see 21 years old. When he gets his full season, this is where it really takes off. And he's basically a 30-plus home run guy for pretty much every year of his career. You can see him. 2012 and 2013, 44 homers each, um, consistently driving in over 110 runs, some years 120, 140 in 2012, and it does it almost again in 2013. So all of these numbers are just bonker numbers, huge power, drives the ball all over the place. You can see on the on the right here, on the right the awards here. 
how he's always, you know, he's either winning the MVP or he's typically in the discussion. So one of the best hitters over my, you know, since I've been really following baseball, since I've been old enough to really remember players, he's been you know, one of the best players in the league for a really, really long time. Here's a look at his contract real quick. So he's still got a ton left on this contract. So for this year, well, he won't be collecting his $30 million, but hopefully he collects something for this season. And then next year at the age of 38, he's got a $30 million um, year again, and then $32 million and another $32 million all the way through 40. And then he has these um, these vesting options. So uh, it vests if Cabrera finishes in the top 10 of MVP voting in 2023, and then another one the following year in 2024. So I don't see that happening. But um, again, he's got plenty of years left in his contract, unless he is, you know, released, which isn't going to happen, um, or if he just randomly decides to shut it down, which again, I don't think he would, being so close to those numbers. I think that he's going to, you know, he's going to hit 500 homers. He's going to get his 3,000 hit I would, hits. I would be very surprised if he did not do that. Now, the last thing I want to look at real quick is this card in particular. So, um, as I said, this card was was fairly expensive. It's the most expensive card that I've bought so far. Um, and when you look at the, uh, when you look at PSA's pop report, which basically shows, uh, you know, when it comes to graded cards, how many cards in total have been graded. So you can see 3,693 of this particular card have been graded. 1,770 have been PSA 10s, 1,511 PSA 9s, and then down. And so actually when I bought this card, I was still you know, this is my third card that I bought. And I actually bought it a while ago, but it just finally got in. So it's taken a couple of weeks. So I'm starting to learn more about this. And so when you look at this, you can see that these these cards actually grade pretty well. Um, you know, if you if you get a uh, one of these graded, you've got a pretty good chance, almost half of them, right? Close to half, a little bit less than half were graded as PSA 10s. And if you look at the nines and tens together, I mean, uh, it's a really, really high number. So it's not like an extremely rare card but again if you want an extremely rare car rare card of cabrera a rare rookie card you're gonna have to spend a lot of money and probably more money than i was comfortable spending so i'm happy to get this card and again i think that the uh that it will continue to at least hold its value if not continue to go up as he gets closer to the hall of fame and then finally gets into the hall of fame and then um usually hall of fame players cards continue to uh, gain in value as time goes on so the only thing that could the, the only thing that could get in the way is if there's some random, um, you know, performance enhancing drug thing where he has, he, I don't think he's been in, you know, any rumors or any of that throughout his career. So um, that would be the only thing that could possibly keep him out of the Hall of Fame. But I think he should be, he should be fine. So that's what we got. I'm excited to get this card. Let me know again what you guys, uh, what you guys think. But I'll give you a, another look real quick. Right there, but pretty cool. Glad to add it to my collection. Let me know what you guys think should be the next card that I grab. I have uh, been able to buy a few more cards, and so I'm going to be showing those soon. I'm also waiting for a few more to arrive in the mail. So I'm, you know, it's taking a little bit longer than I thought for a couple of them, but we'll continue to throw them up here. But again, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think this was a good buy or not? And who else should I be looking at purchasing? Thanks so much again. Make sure to go watch those other videos. If you haven't seen them, give the video a thumbs up, share with all your friends, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. And thank you to our patrons, or patrons on Patreon for supporting the channel. I appreciate that. That's all we got. We'll talk to you later.